studio production begins in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Spicer Bell. I'm the president of the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore. And through this series of programs, uh, we, we shine that uh, spotlight on uh, nonprofit organizations and other activities that are making a difference in our community. I want to start this show with a plug for an upcoming activity. It's called Able to Work Youth Service Day, and it's going to be on April the 14th. Uh, it's a Saturday, and it, it's a combination of two projects that the Community Foundation has worked with in the past. One is Global Youth Service Day, and the other is the Able to Work Day. And what we're doing is we're trying to bring together uh, over 100 volunteers uh, to work on beautification projects at the Salisbury Zoo and at the Ben's Red Swings playground there. If you'd be interested in spending a part of a morning or part of a day in helping to improve the quality of life around our community, contact us at the Community Foundation at the Shorecan Volunteer Center. You can use our phone number of 410-742-9911 and come out and join us on April 14th to improve that area for use of families and children in our community. And now we go on to our regular interview segment. My guest today is David Fitzgerald. David is the Executive Director of the Wacomico County Humane Society. David, welcome. Thank you, Spicer. I appreciate the invitation. And how long is it that you've been with the Humane Society now? I've been the full-time Executive Director since September of this year. Okay. We can still call you the new, I'm the new Executive Director. director. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, you, certainly, David, I've had a, enjoyed my opportunity to get to know you and and uh, we've been fans of the work of the Humane Society for a number of years. We, we know it's the work you do is very, very important. But can you give our viewers a little bit of background on the Humane Society, a little bit of the, sure, sure. the history of Wacomico uh, County? The Humane Society was started in 1969. Uh, a group of people got together who were interested in animal uh, safety and uh, protection of animals and adopting animals. And they formed an organization, a uh, nonprofit, in 1969. Uh, in 1970, they started working with the county and the city of Salisbury, and they started on Marine Road. Uh, since that time, uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, we moved to our current location, which is 5130 Citation Drive. A lot of people uh, don't know where that we are. <laughs> where that is. Uh, it, it's it's kind of out of the way. We're out of the way. We're back by the airport uh, off of Fuchs Road. Uh, near the transfer station and the FedEx complex. So usually we reference the airport and then tell them we're near FedEx or near the state police hangar mm -hmm. and people try to find us. But mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm intrigued every day the number of times on the telephone the staff has to give directions. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, my wife works in, in a complex, medical complex with hundreds of people and she mentions Humane Society. Oh, we have one of those in Wacomico County. <laughs> so so, so uh, we've been there quite a few years, and uh, we offer a lot of services, and mm -hmm. we'd like for people to come visit us. I think there's often confusion about the Humane Society in that there, there are people who think you are a county agency or something, and you're not. No, you're no we're, we're a nonprofit organization. We do have agreements with Wacomico County government and the city of Salisbury for sheltering. Uh, we also are connected to county government for animal control, mm -hmm. and I think I agree with your assessment. Uh, the people get things uh, confused. Uh, one of my goals since I've been there is to uh, divide the organization into two divisions, and we have our animal control division, and that is more a county government function by charter under the county executive. and. The sheltering, the uh, animal sheltering, the adoptions, our public education, that's our nonprofit mm -hmm. side. So I've tried to help educate the public and divide those two divisions. So hopefully we can, we can educate the public that we are a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. Well, and of course, we work with, with donors and people who are interested in doing philanthropic work. And there's the SBCA and there's the, I think, the American Humane Society mm -hmm. and those sorts of things. But, but you really, you're not affiliated. You're not connected with them. No, no, we're not connected. We actually have to join and be members uh, just like you would donate to them and be a member. We have to donate and we get our little membership card as well. Uh, the support that we get is not monetary. Uh, those organizations provide us more reference material. Mm -hmm. uh, we can call those organizations if we have a cruelty case or if we have uh, educational needs 
and we go to the website just as the public would and download things and we can call and get some resources but no your donations uh, while they're fine organizations those donations do not come back to the local community so we encourage the people to donate to the Wycombe County Humane Society uh, our nonprofit organization and your money stays local stays local stays local absolutely and that's what we yeah. encourage and you mentioned about uh, uh, people that come to visit the community foundation and want to bequest money well, they, they can certainly work through your organization and do that as well to help us. Sure. And, and we've worked very closely with, the, with your organization, and uh, your board has, has built a couple of nice endowments mm -hmm. that I think help uh, maintain your facilities and, and that right. sort of thing. Let's, uh, let's, I, want, I want to pursue that just a little bit uh, so that people can find you, and we want to get this on the air a couple of times. Okay. You have a website. It's a great website. Yes. Sir. Give that website a grasp, yeah. and I know we'll show it on the screen. Sure. It's uh, www.wycomicohumane.org, and we are working to revamp that website. Yeah. We're very excited uh, working in-house and with, with a partner to uh, enhance the website, you're going to see a lot of new features. One of the new features that's already been implemented is our event calendar. If you go under events, you can print out the full month's calendar, put it on your refrigerator, uh, see what we have going on. You can go to the specific day and also print that specific event and get more information. So we're excited about that uh, enhancement already. But you're going to Great. see a, a, a revamp of the entire website probably in the next 60 to 90 days. Great. Great. Well, it, it's very helpful already. I've I was, I was looking at it a little bit in preparation of, of, for today's show. Um, what Kind of walk us through the services that the Humane Society provides. Okay, well, as I spoke earlier, we have two divisions, our animal control division, and that's the animal control officer who goes to complaints. Uh, we try to have a proactive service, but with our staffing, we are only uh, approved through budgetary funds of an officer four hours a day. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that, and they uh, complain or they, they have concerns that they're not responded to very fast. Uh, I'm deeply committed to customer service. However, the budgetary constraints at this time is an officer four hours per day. Uh, that's funded through Wycombe County Government. Uh, that officer again responds to usually barking dogs, running at large, uh, injured animals when the officer is available. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's our animal control division. Then that, we that that person has uh, what appears to be an, uh, a, 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 a sick raccoon or something on their property. That you well, get those calls. Well, right? we get those calls, but we only handle the domestic. You animals. only handle domestic. Who handles those other calls? Uh, we refer all the wildlife calls to the Natural Resources Police. Okay. We'll, we'll take care of dogs and cats. But we do get calls. We got a call this week of a bird in a house. We get calls about bees and wasps. A uh, lot, of, lot of calls. Some, some you, you're, the call is very. You're serious. not an exterminator, right? right? We're not an exterminator, and we don't handle wildlife, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, but our, the dogs and cats, we take care of uh, dogs mainly. There is not. That's another uh, misconception in the county. Uh, we get a lot of calls for cats. Mm -hmm. There is not a cat ordinance in our resolution in Wicomica County. Our officers cannot go out and trap cats. They would be violating the law as well because the law doesn't exist uh, for the animal control officer to trap cats. And, and feral cats are a problem in some areas, aren't uh, they? In some areas they are and there is a resolution to that. Uh, unfortunately the homeowner has to take or the owner of the property has to take action and they can uh, purchase their own trap at a local agricultural hmm. uh, supply house mm -hmm. or like a southern states or what have you. Uh, trap the cat and bring it into the main society. Uh, no charge if you're Wicomica County residents for a stray. Uh, bring it in and our staff will evaluate the animal uh, for health and temperament and what have you. Uh, but unfortunately, animal control can't respond you to can't cats. Now, if it's injured, if it's injured, uh, our animal control officer will respond to the injury. Uh, but just for wild cats or a cat on your property or cats digging in your garden, unfortunately, that's that's not an enforceable law in the county. Now, who who provides the animal control for the municip municipalities like Salisbury and Fruitland? Uh, and we we handle everything but the city of Salisbury. Okay. The city of Salisbury through their police department has an animal control officer okay. and they have a separate set of laws and, and rules that they follow. They closely mimic the counties but they do have a few different items. But we handle the entire county, Willers to Sharptown, Delmar to Allen, okay. uh, except for the municipal. A lot of territory. A lot of 
territory for a person four hours a day. Sure. Yeah. And, and if the city of Salisbury animal control officer picks up a stray animal, does it end up with you? Yes. So yes. It, you end up providing the shelter. We, we have a contract with the city of Salisbury for sheltering. They bring the animal and put it in our care and custody, and that officer tells us what uh, needs to be done to the animal, held for a week, you know, we uh, potentially adopt it, just what we can do uh, with the animal because it's still a law enforcement issue at that point. Okay. A any particular unique animal control calls you've gotten since you've been around? I, I would say just, well, like you I said, bees, the, birds, the birds, birds and the bees, bees and the raccoons. Uh, we, we do get calls at hunting time, uh, first day of hunting season. We experienced an increase of calls, people uh, shooting, shooting in my backyard. We refer those type of calls again to natural resources police, but mm -hmm. there's people who move from a urban area to our rural area and then the first day of hunting season and those uh, shotguns and rifles and what have you uh, start shooting, people think they're being shot at in their backyard, but it's mm -hmm. echoing through the woods. And so those type of calls. Uh, bats, we've had calls about bats in houses, but again, exterminator or refer, refer them to natural resources. So you don't have any bats available for adoption? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, we do get a, a lot of different things. Uh, since you mentioned that, uh, our other part of the organization, our other division is, is the sheltering division, mm -hmm. and that's uh, what I call the fun part. That's that's where you you uh, get the forever homes for the dogs and makes the cats. Makes people real happy. Makes people happy. Makes, makes them animals happy. Yeah, too. makes the animals happy. Makes our staff uh, feel rewarded. They've done a good job uh, caring for the animal, getting its new forever home. So we uh, have a variety of animals: dogs, cats. Currently, we have two horses. Currently, uh, you can go on our website. That's thewycomcumaine.org. Right on the front page, the home page and read about two horses that we've had since September. Yeah. They're, 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 uh, they're pretty good looking horses. Oh, they, they are. <laughs> they, uh, they're, they're being well cared for. We've been very gracious. Some of our local uh, equine veterinarians have donated some of their services to them, to us to, to care for them. Uh, the uh, being boarded very well, so if someone's interested, they can call our shelter, mm -hmm. visit the website, or call 410-749-7603 and just ask to uh, speak about the horses and, and we'll uh, give them information. We'll put them in touch with the boarders so they can make an appointment, show them how they can apply for the animal. And we, we'd love to get them uh, forever home. We've had them since around September, October. They're in good health. They've gained a lot of weight since we've had, had the horses in our care and we would love someone to enjoy them for the rest mm -hmm. of their lives. And, and that was, uh Kind of, that was a, a neglect complaint. Wasn't it was an animal control, started as an animal control issue uh, with a cruelty neglect complaint and our animal control officers went through the process, the legal processes and the uh, owner at that time decided it was best to uh, understood that they could not care for them, recognize that, talk with their family and thought it was best to surrender them to us so we could provide mm -hmm. them good care and find them a new home. Great, and they're in a lot better shape. Yep, a lot better shape. So, uh, and we get bunnies and stuff. We're waiting for that. Easter's coming. Oh, yes. Easter's coming. So we, we were having discussion in the shelter yesterday. Uh, how many bunny cages do we have? And uh, that type of thing. And we keep a list uh, for those specialty animals. Uh, if someone's interested in these specialty animals like birds or rabbits uh, or guinea pigs, they can call and we'll put their name on a, on a list for those specialty animals. Mm -hmm. We don't keep a list for specific breeds of dogs and cats. We encourage you to visit the website and come in. Mm -hmm. But specialty animals, we'll keep a list. Uh, usually what happens is a uh, child and the parents think, uh, okay, it's Easter, let's get uh, Johnny or Sally a nice bunny. Well, two weeks of that, and uh, oh, we're done. We're, we're done with that. We can't take care of this. This is a mess. Uh, let's bring it into the Humane Society. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you also another uh, service you offer is a spay and neutering clinic. Uh, very, talk very, about that. very proud of that. Very proud of that clinic. That's a uh, spay and neuter clinic. Uh, we call it. I call it reduced cost. It's not low cost, but it's reduced cost. Mm -hmm. Uh, usually one third of what you can have spay neuter done at a veterinary hospital or vet, vet's office. Uh, because we have lower overhead, we also don't keep the animal overnight, so our costs are reduced. We also look for specialty grants or donors who make special donations to the spay neuter clinic, so we can offer at a reduced cost. Uh, that's available to everybody, not only Wycombe County residents, that's available to anyone mm -hmm. to come in. 
Uh, we encourage the spay and neuter for a couple of reasons. One, the population. You mentioned the feral cats earlier. If we can control the pet population, as Bob Barker used to say, mm -hmm. on the prices, right? Uh, that's going to help us greatly. Going to mm -hmm. help the community, public safety, public health. Uh, we usually operate that on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, if someone's interested in that, again, call our shelter, 410-749-7603. Uh, they'll explain the cost, the prerequisites, uh, what you need to do with the animal prior to coming in, and we'll take an appointment. Uh, usually we run Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, we've just uh, worked with another vet last week, and we're going to open some on Fridays now because of the demand. <clears throat> Uh, so you can make an appointment, and we'll be glad to have you come in. Great. Uh, you're watching Community Foundation Spotlight. Uh, I'm Spicer Bell with the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore. My guest today is uh, David Fitzgerald, and David is the uh, Executive Director of the Wacomico County Humane Society. And mm -hmm. we're learning a little bit about the Humane Society and, and some of the, the services that they, they offer. Uh, and we were talking about the, their, their uh, spay and neuter clinics, and if you have a pet that hasn't, has, uh, hasn't been spayed or neutered, uh, it's a good way to get that service. And once again, why is that so important, David? Well, the, the first reason that, that I talked about was the pet population, mm -hmm. uh, to control the population. Uh, it also helps for our animal control. Uh, people don't realize that a male dog can uh, smell a female dog at heat three miles away. Oh my gosh. So, so <laughs> that's why we have the running at large calls, mm -hmm. uh, because that male that you've let out for, you've done it a hundred times. You open the back door for the dog to go out to, to use the bathroom. Well, it goes out to use the bathroom and gets that smell of that female dog. He's gone. He's not been <laughs> neutered. He's gone. He's <laughs> going to look for a mate. Yeah. So, so that helps us with animal control. Another important part. I, I had one of those dogs once. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's normally very well behaved and would be right there back at the door when you went to open it. And every once in a while. He wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't. He, he, he got that whiff. So we and, got that and, taken care of. <laughs> right. And, and the, uh, uh, the health of the animal mm -hmm. as well. For yeah. a male animal, the testicular cancer, just like in an adult, uh, if you're removing those and, and neutering that animal, you've removed that risk, uh, health risk to that male uh, dog. Same thing with a, a female. Once you spay the female and take out the female organs, you've reduced that risk of cancers. Mm -hmm and other medical problems, as well as the, the, the mess that occurs when, when the female goes into heat. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have people that the first time their dog goes into heat, they're, they're in a panic. <laughs> Can you get us in the clinic? Uh, what do we do with all this mess? Mm -hmm. What do we do with the 10 dogs that are outside my house <laughs> that have showed up? So we encourage it for two mm -hmm. reasons, the, the, the pet population and the health of the animal. We, mm -hmm. we certainly want you to have your pet many, many years, mm -hmm. and that will certainly reduce the risk of some of those diseases. Yeah. Any given, t it, 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 it put you on the spot with some statistics, how many animals go through the Humane Society in any, on an average year, do you know? Well, yes, uh, intake, we uh, 3,000 to 3,500 animals come in mm -hmm. each year. Uh, to the Humane Society. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to find those animals a, a home if mm -hmm. their health and temperament uh, fits an adoption. Mm -hmm. We also work with rescue organizations. Uh, that's why our cats in the shelter are low. Uh, we are gearing up, as we talked about for rabbits with Easter, we're gearing up. Kitten season is coming, mm -hmm. uh, so we know we're going to have an influx of them, but we are very, very fortunate to work with several rescue organizations for both dogs and cats, but mainly cats. And you'll see that on our website, and that's a question, and we just try to clarify that on our website some. So I'll try to clarify that a little bit today. When you see on our website, Went to Rescue, we have other, some are nonprofit, some are government, but mainly are nonprofit organizations that uh, have more connections than we have. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we will send sometimes up to 20 cats to the rescue organization, and they're connected with other rescues or connected with uh, pet smarts or pet codes that offer the animals and have a more uh, robust uh, advertising mm -hmm. campaign than sure. we have. So, so that's when you see that went to rescue, that's what we mean by mm -hmm. that. Uh, we've had on the website for adoption, maybe we've had the animal a couple weeks. Uh, we're not seeing any interest in the animal for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Uh, so our uh, animal care manager will reach out to the rescues and say, I have this animal, or I have 20 cats, or I just have uh, mm -hmm. kittens that have been weaned. Can you help us out? 
and we our goal is again to get these animals to home as soon as possible. Now, you your situation is such that any animal that comes from Wicomico County, mm -hmm. you have to take. Oh yes, yes, you, we're an open admission shelter. You're an open. I, make it, I wasn't remembering the right term, but you're an open admission shelter for Wicomico County residents. And, and, that puts you in a situation where, and I think some people don't understand this at times, you do have to euthanize some, some, oh, oh, some animals. Oh, oh, yes, and I try to be very, very honest with people yeah. about that. Uh, we do not euthanize for space. Uh, we will fill that building up. We'll call our fostering people. We, we will take the animals. Yeah. Uh, the only time the animals are euthanized, if it's a medical condition, uh, sometimes people... Uh, don't understand that medical condition uh, portion because it may be a medical condition if the animal was at your home you could take care of and take it to the vet. Mm -hmm. When we bring a sick animal in to our shelter we cannot endanger the population of the entire shelter. We sure. have hundreds of animals there. If something's communicable yes, you've got to deal with that. If it's a communicable disease we have a very uh, small and we call it an isolation room. And my background is also in as a paramedic mm -hmm. and in human health. Uh, and it's not a true isolation room. It does not have separate air conditioning, heat. So if that's a respiratory disease and goes through our system, uh, so we have to really, and, and it's taken very seriously. Uh, the euthanasia is very seriously uh, examined. The reason why, if it's medical. Uh, the other reason would be temperament. A, a animal that's not adoptable uh, because of its temperament, which means mm -hmm. it's, it's aggressive to the staff, it's aggressive to other people, aggressive to other animals. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately we do, but we, we keep that to a minimum, uh, and we, we do take all animals. We're open mission for Wicomico County mm -hmm. residents. I think a great answer to that is let's talk about Archer. Okay. Archer's okay. on your website, yep. and Archer's a dog that uh, was brought to you back in early February, I think. Yeah, uh, Archer, uh, we got a call from, from a business in the Hebron area, and uh, they saw this dog wandering around, uh, stumbling. Uh, we dispatched our animal control officer for what we thought maybe was an injured or ill animal. Uh, she picked up the animal, tried to make contact with several homes around the area. Does this belong to anybody? Uh, no one stepped up and said they had ownership. Uh, we brought Archer back, and he's a husky and weighed 19 pounds. Mm. And so we and, have a before picture and, and, on, yeah, on this I mean, website. If somebody's at all interested in the story, they ought to go to your website oh, yes. and, and look at that before and, and after a photo of what you were able to do with, with, with that dog. Yep, yeah, and, and Archer came in at 19 pounds, and uh, I compliment our staff. Uh, he was taken immediately to one of our partners uh, with veterinary medicine to be checked out and taken care of. And then our, our staff took over the care and proud to report 31 pounds. Yeah, he, he, your last picture was 26. Well, he's 31 now. He, he's starting to pork up a little he, bit. He, he must is. like your food. He likes our food, and, and we're grateful to our volunteers, especially our Salisbury University volunteers who have taken him and exercised him, taken him for walks. Uh, when we first had him, uh, we had him in what I mentioned earlier, our isolation area, which just our staff has access to, and we tried to socialize. And He would cower down and get in a corner. Now he comes to the front of the kennel. He's looking forward to that volunteer or that potential adopter to walk him and talk to him and rub on him. And uh, next week he'll be available for adoption. He's gained enough weight uh, that we're, we're comfortable with uh, finding him his forever home. So if you're interested, check the website, wacomcohumane.org. Uh, come in, visit with him. We encourage that, and hopefully next week uh, he's going to find his forever home. It, it's a great success story, uh, David, and I, and I know on occasion uh, you get criticism for euthanizing animals, mm -hmm. and I'm um, familiar enough with your operation to know that when you do, you take that very seriously, oh, and when, very when, seriously. when that decision is made, it's, it's just because an animal is, is just not going to be adoptable and, exactly. and, and exactly. what have you. Now, you've got some events coming up. Mm -hmm. What is Cause for Paws? Well, Cause for Paws, this will be our 18th year. We're proud of that. It's our Walk for the Animals. It's in Winter Place Park on May the 12th from 10 to 1. Uh, again, go on our website, wacomcommune.org. Go under the events. And we mm -hmm. have a special page this year. Again, mm -hmm. enhancements to the website. We're, we are excited about those. We've created a special page just mm -hmm. for the Walk for the Animals. So all the information is there. How you can help us. Mm -hmm. Go on that website. Download a form. 
and come out and walk with us. Get sponsors and come out and raise some money for the shelter. It's our biggest fundraising event of the year. Uh, there's going to be plenty of other activities. So even if you don't have an animal uh, to come and walk, come out and support our vendors, our sponsors, uh, visit with the animals. Uh, most all pet owners will let you, uh, you know, socialize with their animal, but there's going to be uh, vendors, mm -hmm. not only animal-related vendors, but we've expanded that as well. Uh, we're reaching out to other vendors, uh, such as we've visited our local farmer's markets to ask those vendors to come. So it'll be a nice day for you at Winter Place Park. So May Great. the 12th, come out from 10 to 1. Uh, there'll be food. There's also going to be demonstrations. Our Wycombe County Sheriff's Office, who we work closely with, is going to have a canine demo. Yeah. And we may have some other surprises as well. Great. So put it on your calendar. Yep. Uh, we're, we're going to keep our fingers crossed that you have for a good beautiful weather. day. <laughs> beautiful weather spring always, day. always scares us, but we are, we are hoping for a nice spring day. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure you will. And it's a great opportunity. You don't have to have a dog or cat no. to come yeah. out. You can... If you just have an interest in, in, in animals or uh, supporting Humane Society, it's a great way to do that. Um, folks, if they're interested in donating, they can do that through your website. Sure, they can donate okay. through the website. Uh, they can okay. come out and visit the shelter, donate mm -hmm. to the shelter. Uh, again, on the website, we take monetary donations, but we also keep a, a list on the website of material goods. Mm -hmm. Uh, so keep, keep a look at that because we change that occasionally. Uh, we might get overloaded with towels and just can't put another towel in the place so we might take that off the list but uh, okay. take a look at that so sometimes people just like to uh, donate a physical product instead, sure. instead of money and we'll certainly take that yeah. as well well David you and your staff and uh, and your board and volunteers do a great job and we certainly appreciate what you're doing for the animals in the area and and as a service to the residents of uh, Wicomico County appreciate you coming in and visiting with us yeah. well thanks for the invitation and again we're uh, open uh, Tuesday through Saturday. We are looking at expanding some of our hours, maybe a nighttime uh, open till seven or eight, one night a week. And we're also expand, possibly expanding to open on Mondays. So that's our future goals. Uh, but we're always welcome to, to volunteers or ideas. And they can certainly call and ask for me at the shelter if they need to. And that's 410-749-7603 or wicomicohumane.org. And if you go to the contacts page, uh, the link is to my email. Great. Well, David, uh, w welcome to uh, the Humane Society. I, you're still in your first year. We yes. wish you uh, wish, wish you success there, and uh, we at least the Community Foundation, and I think for all of our viewers, we look forward to working with well, you. And I look forward to working to the community. They can contact me anytime. Great. And uh, uh, one more reminder: uh, coming up on uh, April the 14th is uh, Ready to Work. Uh, Able Youth Service Day and uh, in, in, uh, Able to Work Youth Service Day where we're going to be doing beautification projects at the Salisbury Zoo and at the Ben's Red Swings Playground in, in the Salisbury Park. Uh, we need over 100 volunteers that day and if you, if you we ask you to just give us some thought, uh, it's a great opportunity for individuals, families, senior citizens to come out. Uh, we're going to have a, a picnic lunch for everyone. One. Uh, we'll have the supplies you need uh, to do those projects. So uh, join in that project. It's, uh, it's going to be a great opportunity to contribute to beautifying an area that's so important to our community. It's April 14th is Able to Work Youth Service Day at the Salisbury Zoo. So, and thank you for viewing PAC 14 and joining us here on Community Foundation Spotlight. Would you like to see your community organization or nonprofit group featured on PAC 14? To get started, contact us at 410-677-5014 or visit our website at www.pac14.org. PAC 14 is a great way to connect with your community.